Hey, do you need some help setting goals and figuring out a plan to make this year your best year yet? Listen, I've got you. Go to christywright.com slash goals to download my free goal setting guide. I'm going to ask you a few simple but powerful questions that are going to help you know what's going on right now so you can set goals that are right right now. Go to christywright.com slash goals to get your free goal setting guide today. Go to christywright.com slash goals today. Hey everyone, and welcome to Get Your Hopes Up. I'm Christy Wright, and I'm so glad you're here. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by power of the Holy Spirit. Our God is the God of hope, and He wants you to overflow with hope. So let's start our week by getting our hopes up again. Now, I've got to give you guys a confession because I like to keep it real around here, and I like to lead by example, be transparent, be honest. Here we go. I lie to myself all the time. Now, I don't mean to, of course. Like, I don't want to lie to myself. I don't intentionally or consciously lie to myself. But the reality is, I do. I say things to myself all the time like, I don't know, I'm going to fold the laundry today. No, I'm not. It's going to move from my bed to the floor to my bed to the floor every day for a while till there's no laundry left, y'all. Or I will tell myself, I am never going to let my car get that gross ever again. And then I remember I have children and it's that gross by the end of the day. I might tell myself, oh, I'm going to make a salad with spring mix this week. No, I'm not. Or I'm never screaming at my kids again. That's a great intention. The reality is I'm probably going to lose my cool again. Listen, I have great intentions, of course, but y'all, I'm lying to myself. I'm not going to fold the laundry. My car will be a mess in five minutes. That salad is going to go bad, and I will for sure yell again. Because you know why? I'm human. But I really believe these things I tell myself because when we're believing a lie, well, you know what? We don't know it's a lie. No, we don't. And my laundry and spring mix lies I'm believing don't have major consequences, but what about the ones that do? What about the lies where there's more on the line than a bag of spring mix or folded socks? See, the problem is that when we are being deceived, we don't know we're being deceived. No one knows they're believing lies. That's what makes it a lie. The only way to combat a lie is with the truth. And usually that truth has to come outside of us, maybe from a friend or reading the Bible or the Holy Spirit revealing it to us. We don't know it's a lie, so we need help. And today I'm going to help you. I'm going to share with you three lies that you're probably believing and the truth that you need to hear to set you free. These lies are not true. They are not from God and they are not for you. So here are three lies you need to stop believing. Lie number one, you're the only one that feels that way. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever thought that or felt that? You're the only one that feels that way. The enemy whispers this to you for one purpose, y'all to keep you scared and keep you silent. Because if you're silent, then you won't share what you're going through. And if you don't share what you're going through, then other people can't find hope and healing through your situation or your story. Y'all know there is power in community. And so the enemy wants you feeling alone and living lonely. He doesn't want the power that comes from the community that God designed us for. So if he can keep you too scared to speak up or share or be vulnerable or be honest, then everyone is walking around feeling the same way, but too scared to talk about it when what would heal them and help them the most is a community to walk through this with. Y'all, I fear this every time I go to record a reel on Instagram. Every single time. I have a thought, I have a feeling, I have an experience, I have an insight. Something is going on in my life that I feel is powerful. And before I go to share it, I always feel scared. No one's gonna connect with this. This doesn't relate. You're the only one that feels this way. This is only for you. You're the only one that feels this way. And y'all, every single time when I show up anyway, and I go ahead and record and post the reel, every time people blow up my phone with how they feel the exact same way. They feel the exact same way. The same way that I felt, and I was sure I was the only one that felt that way. See, the enemy wants you suffering silently. He wants you too scared to share. He wants you feeling shame and embarrassment and fear, and he wants you lonely. There is power in community and empathy and friendship and shared experience. The enemy is telling you you're the only one that feels that way and you're not. Y'all, I still worry that I'm the only one that feels a certain way and I still hesitate to share or show up or be vulnerable or tell my story. 
But I'll tell you, over time, I have learned to think about that fear differently. See, either way, there's fear. We've got two options. Fear number one, people think you're crazy and no one gets it. Fear number two, missing out on encouraging someone because you were too scared to share. So I've decided over time, I just am going to fear number two more. See, I'd rather risk people thinking I'm crazy than miss out on the opportunity to be used by God to encourage someone else by what I'm going through. Lie number one is that you're the only one that feels this way. No, you're not. Your story isn't just for you. It's for others too. So share what you're going through so people can find hope, help, and healing through you. That is the truth. Hey, do you deal with stress and anxiety throughout your day? Of course, we all do. That's why I want to tell you about an amazing app called Abide. Abide is the number one Christian meditation app, and it will ease your mind. It has daily scripture meditations that will refocus your mind on the truth of God's word and draw you closer to Christ. For a limited time, my listeners get 25% off a premium subscription when you text Christy to 22433. That's C-H-R-I-S-T-Y to 22433. Abide's meditations start at two minutes long, and they're easy to fit in your schedule. I know you all want to get in God's Word more, and this is a great way to get God's Word in you. Get started now with 25% off a premium subscription by texting Christy to 22433. You'll get additional stories and meditations, premium music, soothing sounds, and more. Text Christy to 22433 to get started with Abide today. That's Christy to 22433. All right, lie number one is you're the only one that feels this way. It's time for lie number two. Lie number two, everyone has it easier than you. Have you ever heard that, felt that, believed that? Everyone has it easier than you do. Y'all, this is a victim mentality. And if you believe that everyone has it easier than you, which is absolutely not true, then you start planning and attending your own pity party. You start making a case for why everything is bad, everything is hard, it's always been bad, it's always been hard, and it always will be. You start thinking about how God has abandoned you. You start thinking about how God is holding out on you, how God has forgotten you. Can I remind you of some tough love truth? Victims don't win. Ever. In any story in the history of ever, pity party throwers never get the prize, y'all, because they're too busy pouting instead of praising, and they're too busy throwing a tantrum instead of trying to make things better. They use all their energy to feel sorry for themselves and make excuses for why things are the way they are, which then just gives them permission to just stay stuck there. It's pitiful, and it's not from God. Ever. Do you see how quickly the lie that everyone has it easier than you can send you down a path a full-on doubting God, just like Eve did in the Garden of Eden? Do you see how this lie is a seed that sprouts into all kinds of weeds that suck the life and faith and hope and effort and praise out of your life? See, it seems like it's not a big deal on the surface. But y'all, the enemy usually doesn't come to you as a red guy with horns and a pitchfork, okay? He comes at you with a half-truth that seems really enticing. Did God really say that you can't eat from any tree in the garden? That's what it says in Genesis. Did God really say, those are the words out of the serpent's mouth. Did God really say that you can't eat from any tree in the garden? I'm sorry, any tree? That's not what God said. He said you can't eat from that tree, not any tree. See how sneaky that was? How subtle that was? Just one word, just one change. The difference between any tree and that tree. He gets you by degrees, friend. He gets you by degrees. He sneaks in lies and half-truths and he whispers doubt into your mind. He makes you feel sorry for yourself that leads you down a path of doubting God. Everyone has it easier than you. What does that seed of doubt do to you? Where does it send you? Can you even imagine your holy heavenly father who has written your story with incredible detail and intentionality whispering that to you? No. No, that is not God whispering that to you. And you know what? There's no neutral ground, y'all. There's no neutral ground here. If it's not God, then who do you think it is? Everyone has it easier than you. Everyone does not have it easier than you. Everyone has it hard. Different types of hard, but everyone has it hard. 
because the world is hard. Life is hard. People are broken and relationships are a mess. Everyone does not have it easier than you. So stop believing that lie and start living in gratitude for what is good and right in your life and start praying about and fixing what is not good or not right. Everyone does not have it easier than you. That is the truth. All right. Y'all still with me? It's time for lie number three. Lie number three is this. It's never going to get better. It's never going to get better. You ever felt that? I sure have. And when things are hard, when you're in a valley or wilderness, when you've experienced heartbreak, that feeling is so real and so consuming. It's never going to get better. This is the voice of hopelessness and defeat and discouragement. And I want to share with you just some interesting research about hope and optimism. Research shows that having hope and optimism and a positive outlook has incredible effects on your life. In fact, it actually increases healing from wounds and surgeries. It improves almost every aspect of your physical and mental health. And believe it or not, it leads to a longer life. But you know what? The opposite is also true. Hopelessness and discouragement, negativity and pessimism have the exact opposite effect. And if that wasn't enough, if the enemy can't get you to give up hope, he can get you to give up on a lot of other things that go with hope, like faith, trust, praise, confidence, boldness, even love. You can't have faith without hope or trust without hope or confidence without hope or love without hope. See, when you take hope out of the equation, you knock over the first domino that takes everything else out with it. By the way, this is the number one red flag for counselors for suicide, if someone seems hopeless. This is why you have to answer these questions on your doctor's questionnaire. Do you feel hopeless about the future? It's very, very concerning. This lie of it's never going to get better is the lie the enemy uses to take you out, to make you want to give up and stop trying. He's doing all he can to stop you. And it's just not true. Y'all, God speaks about the future and he says that it is good and his plans are good. And most of all, he is in our future and he is good. So whatever he's doing next is good. In fact, it's even better. It's never going to get better. That is not true. It is not from God and it is not for you. I want you to listen to these lies one more time. You're the only one that feels this way. Everyone has it easier than you. It's never going to get better. Can you imagine God saying any of that to you? Can you imagine your heavenly father that adores you saying that to you? You're the only one that feels this way. Everyone has it easier than you. It's never going to get better. That is not the voice of God. It is not true and it is not for you. You know, I've shared this story before, but I want to share it again because it's so relevant to this conversation today about the lies we believe I joked in the beginning about spring mix and lying to myself about folding laundry, but the reality is we all believe really, really deep lies, really deep lies, and they affect our day and our life and our relationships and our relationship with the Lord in more ways than we can possibly imagine. I was listening to a sermon years ago, and as I sat in the congregation at the very end of the sermon, he asked the audience to pray and spend some time asking God what lies they're believing And in that moment of quiet prayer, the Lord revealed to me that I was believing the lie that my husband didn't love me. I feel myself choking up even now as I remember that moment. It felt like it took my breath away because it was so true. It was so real that I was believing that lie. I had been living for years in marriage believing that my husband didn't love me because my husband is not extroverted or super expressive like I am. I would just gather proof and evidence against him all the time. You know, he'd come home from work and I would say hi and he wouldn't be as excited as I expected him to be. So I would hear that whisper again, see, he doesn't love you. Or I'd come downstairs in a new outfit and I would just expect him to do cartwheels across the house in celebration of my outfit, which he's never done before. And I have no reason to believe. But then when he didn't do the thing I wanted him to do or hoped he would do or expected he would do, I would hear that whisper again, see, he doesn't love you. He doesn't notice you, see. That lie was this shadow that haunted me for years. And I would have thought at the time I had a good, happy marriage, but this lie had gotten root in my life and I had no idea the damage it was doing. 
I had no idea how much it was affecting my relationship with my husband. And as I sat there and the Holy Spirit revealed to me, you are believing the lie that your husband doesn't love you. Y'all, I was truly set free. It was like my eyes were opened and this lie was exposed. My husband adores me. Y'all, my husband pursued me when I was in a running group and throwing up like I told you recently. Like he adores me. He has always adored me. He loves me very much. But the enemy had got a foothold in my life. And he made me believe this lie that my husband didn't love me. And then I would just gather proof to make this case, this confirmation bias where I just gathered proof to back up what I already believed. But what I believed wasn't true. My husband did love me. He does love me. He will always love me. What lies are you believing? Maybe they're small. Maybe they're big. Maybe they're the ones I've shared today. Maybe they're something completely different. I just want to leave some space right now for you to pray, just like I did at the end of that sermon. Would you just have the courage to maybe even pause this show? Would you just sit there in silence? And would you pray and say, Lord, I want to know the truth and I want to be set free. Would you, through the power of your Holy Spirit right now, reveal to me any lies that I'm believing, God? Would you set me free from the bondage of these lies through the power of the Holy Spirit in the powerful name of Jesus? Would you set me free, Lord? Would you pause this show right now and pray that prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you any lies you're believing and then have the courage to listen to what he has to say? I want to give you space to do that now. All right, I would love to pray for us as we close this episode because this can be very powerful and I want to make sure to just put our hearts in the right posture as we receive what the Lord has said to us. Father God, I pray for every single person listening right now. I pray for every single person in what you have just revealed to them. And maybe if you didn't reveal it just now, God, I pray you would later on in the day, would you at some point, would you show them and tell them the lies they're believing so that they can be free, Lord? God, give them the truth the truth about that situation, the truth about that person, the truth about themselves, the truth about their body, the truth about their future. God, would you just shine a light? Would your light break through today, Lord? Would your light break through and your truth break through in such a powerful way that there is no room for confusion? There is no room for deception from the enemy. God, all we can hear and see and know is your truth. God, your word says, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. God, I am praying for freedom and breakthrough and truth for my friend listening right now. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray you can hear that truth. I pray you can receive and believe that truth. And most of all, I pray you can live in the truth that the Holy Spirit has revealed to you. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me for Get Your Hopes Up. I love hanging out with you every Monday to help you get to know God, get closer to Him, and get your hopes up again. Be sure to follow the Christy Wright channel so you never miss a new episode. And then I'll see you next Monday for another new episode of Get Your Hopes Up. Get Your Hopes Up.